Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your caster for the match, Crit Chronic War Catalyst here, and it is week 8 of the regular season for 2015. Uh, we now have everyone divided into their formal divisions here, uh, so we actually are casting another game uh, in the Vile Mod division, the top division so far, so we're seeing some top tier plays come out here in the After Hours Gaming League, and right now, Let's hop into this champ select, and it will be uh, on the blue side, uh, Team Intel uh, versus on the red side, Facebook of Feed Story. Great, <laughs> great names there, of course. Um, always amusing me. Unfortunately, uh, the red side did ban out uh, just some A champions. Uh, they are not the same champions as the ban uh, phase, but the important ones for us to talk about were on the blue side, so I appreciate them actually banning the same champions as we did in chat, so we can talk about that for a moment. Uh, but very quickly, before we get into the pick ban, uh, let's talk about uh, these two teams really quickly. So Intel, of course, one of the world's largest uh, chip manufacturers, uh, most well known for their processors. I I uh, very frequently have Intel chips in all of my computers, so big shout out to them. Um, I'm personally excited uh, for this team uh, to finally get a time that I can cast them in uh, that actually works for my schedule because uh, the charity they're playing for is uh, United Way, a charity we've casted for before, but actually specifically the United Way of uh, Columbia and Willamette. Uh, and specifically that is in my city, it is headquartered in Portland, and with an Intel uh, headquarters in Portland as well, I think I might be in the same place as this team, so I'm kind of excited uh, to finally get to cast one of their games for my fellow Portlanders. Um, so the United Way out here specifically, uh, this specific chapter works with uh, three specific goals to try and uh, prevent childhood poverty, and those goals uh, revolve around creating successful students uh, with a strong educational foundation, uh, stable families to try and have a uh, home foundation that uh, enables those students to succeed, uh, and also um, uh, connected communities to create a uh, strong fabric um, within the communities of togetherness and uh, overcoming adversity as a group. Um, so it's a great charity out here. Um, I'm really glad to see they're getting some love out here from uh, fellow uh, Portlanders on this Intel team. And on the red side, certainly not to be discounted, Facebook, of course, we're all fam familiar with that uh, social media site. Um, they are playing for Doctors Without Borders, which is one of the greatest charities in the world, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, they send doctors uh, to war-torn regions uh, and developing countries that are facing diseases that they simply don't have the uh, um, healthcare system to handle. Uh, you know, in a, a lot of these places, uh, doctors will be just flat out putting their lives at risk by going to these areas, uh, whether it's uh, killed uh, for trying to be a first responder uh, on the scene of a battlefield, or if it's um, catching one of those uh, what could be epidemic diseases breaking out when they're trying to treat the first uh, victims of it. You know, I mean, these are really brave people, and this charity helps enable them and make sure they're able to get to where they need to go. Um, so, without further ado, though, let's hop into the pick band phase here. Uh, looking at the red, uh, the blue side bands, uh, they banned out um, Rexi, Annie, and Vi. Specifically, uh, Annie, or excuse me, Rexi and Vi were targeted bands at the jungler uh, for this red side. So, they definitely. Uh, wanted to try and tap that champion pool a little bit, but unfortunately, uh, they did not actually first pick a jungler. They did first pick the Jinx. This is a little out of order now. Um, but uh, having first picked that Jinx to make sure uh, that on the blue side, they actually secured a, the comfort champion uh, for their ADC. They did give up a pick to this red side to make sure that he did get something that he was comfortable on so he wasn't off put to uh, a Pantheon or a Wukong that's a little less common for himself so he was able to pick up the J4 who despite uh, some minor late game nerfs is still very strong in the early game gets his lanes quite ahead um, and I'm very interested to see how this Sejuani and Maokai will work together uh, it seems like with the Swain coming out as well in the top lane um, also notably really quickly uh, before we get too much into that, well, there's only one Ignite for this blue side, and that is on the LeBlanc, who's going to be 
uh, looking to spam that ignite whenever she trades um, with people who she has a chance to 100 zero. So there might not be a tactical ignite uh, for this blue side uh, with Nami opting to go for the exhaust when uh, there's a J4 hopping in and an RE dashing in uh, with that Foxfire. So uh, unfortunately, they won't be able to counter that swing as much as possible, which is precisely why LeBlanc, I think, was picked up uh, in sort of these later stages after Sejuani and Maokai were locked in as the uh, second and third picks here. Uh, Sejuani uh, is a little tricky to actually land her engagement properly, but if you have a Maokai that can twist it advance in to uh, start off the engagement, Sejuani is going to hit all that CC, and that CC is devastating. Um, so one, with this team, though, uh, with a Maokai and Sejuani diving in on you, they themselves won't really do that much damage. They're going to need to take some time to let the Jinx, let the mid laner catch up to them and actually have that follow-up damage start to come out. Um, so what they needed uh, to do for the red side was to pick a champion that can get in between them, slow down the back line, stop them from actually getting to the red side team, and then make those two who engage together get isolated and have a chance for the entire red team to sort of take their time destroying, chewing through those frontliners, get, get those kills right as the backline actually gets them, and then have a lopsided fight with a maybe weakened top laner, a maybe weakened jungler, but not two dead ones. And that's exactly what Swain was for. To get in between uh, those two laners, to try and, uh, or excuse me, to get in between those engagement levels, to try and create uh, as many problems for them as possible. Actually seeing Maokai uh, not go for the flash star here switching up a little bit might be wanting to go a little bit more aggressive against this swain we'll see uh, as we actually see some pings coming out for this invade here um, in the blue side of the jungle or excuse me the west side of the jungle for the blue team here um, but yes so we're gonna see uh, actually it looks like mirrored invades right here um, so probably just gonna be some wards thrown down uh, getting vision on possible lane swaps here but yeah like I was saying um, with that, Swain picked up who can just turn on his ultimate, sustain through any poke damage that comes from the back line when he intercepts them with his W to snare them down. Um, they needed somebody that can actually have some higher mobility. Unfortunately, they had already locked in the Jinx, so they couldn't pick up a Sivir, but that's why they did lock in the LeBlanc. Uh, the LeBlanc is going to be able, obviously, with her high mobility to jump in, to create some pressure, to lay down some damage. Uh, and not have any opportunity for Swain to get in between them uh, and create that pressure to stop the back line from following up. And also, Nami works well with that as well, because even if she is intercepted, she can tidal wave through somebody, still bring some CC uh, to the fight, get some passive move speed on some people. Uh, definitely not something to be discounted, uh, even if she does get intercepted. So, overall... That is what we're going to be looking for as far as the team fights are concerned. And it looks like uh, they will opt to go for a normal uh, standard lanes here uh, for both sides with Sejuani starting the Krugs here. Uh, Gromp start for the J4. And LeBlanc looking to get uh, a little bit of uh, early shoving in this lane here. Uh, Ari definitely a little bit better at that though. Uh, so we'll see how effective this exactly is. Maybe both sides probably just going to push it out at an equal rate and... Uh, equal each other out there. Yeah, overall it looks like uh, Sejuani going for red first probably going to want to um, get as much of a clear as possible uh, before she starts here. Maokai actually going to go uh, back to uh, his lane after farming up uh, the race there, or excuse me, no longer the race, the Razor Beaks. Um, so he will have a level 2 and get here uh, in time to actually only miss uh, one wave, I believe, of CS. Not even that, really. Because um, he did get there in plenty of time. Um, so overall, uh, definitely a worthy uh, play there. And actually, gonna have to throw down the ignite early is Nami uh, because of just how aggressive Jinx, is, or excuse me, Kate is being trying to outsmart that criminal by using uh, her range there. So 
see me okay doing his best to shove in against that swing he did start uh with the uh mana pot so he's got a little bit of help there as well but now with nami actually poked down so low too this bottom lane really has to be careful as we see leblanc actually gonna land the chains there lots of damage onto ari not gonna get the kill this time but definitely a threat to do so in the next encounter and nami taking so low sona probably should have flashed there to uh get the one last or excuse me not sona jesus <laughs> janna should have probably flashed her to get the last auto. That definitely would have been the kill onto Nami. Instead, Nami's going to be able to hang around, throw down some heals uh, as she gets that off cooldown and try and get uh, that sustain going. Uh, the infamous Nami sustain, of course. Able to survive through just about anything. Uh, only rivaled really by that Sona, who I mistook, mistook Janna for for half a second there. Um... Yeah, we see a lot of good aggression uh, coming out from this Maokai using that uh, early level advantage. But hold on here because we see Swain going pretty aggressive, actually falling into the bush uh, with this J4 coming in. And just now going to leave it to J4 uh, to finish off with that red buff going. Uh, he will have a slow on Maokai, but unfortunately Maokai going to just be too fast. Going to be able to walk away on that one. Uh, though Maokai does not have his teleport up because he did get that uh, Wraith start. Not Wraith, Razor Beak start. So he's going to have to walk back to lane, and Swain can shove this in. He will get a lot of CS denied here. It looks like he's going to do his best to do so in the top lane, as you see a good bubble here uh, from Nami, but unfortunately an equally good shield thrown down very timely from Janna there to block out almost all of that damage, so nothing really comes of it. it looks like Swain just going to get a little bit of that CS, uh, get a little bit extra money in there so he can finish up an item, go back, uh, pick up, uh, those ingredients for the catalyst uh, and then keep that lane frozen um, so he's not going to miss out on any CS while he's going back uh, to keep his teleport up so he can uh, possibly teleport uh, down to dragon for an early dragon fight uh, if that is what it looks like they're going to go for here. See, so attempted harass coming out uh, in the mid lane here. Uh, but with J4 roaming down into this bottom lane now, he's going to be hanging out in that bush. They're pretty confident it's not warded since there are minions down there. Um, they will know that it's not warded. And Jinx actually stepping forward to throw down the ward. Gonna get uh, caught by the flag and drag. And unfortunately, uh, will be able to get away though. With that Nami sustain, sustain, should be able to heal on up as we see Maokai going in for a little bit of trading here. Actually, going to cost him the cannon minion to do so. Uh, but I, here we see the ultimate coming out from this Ari, who's doing her best to try and go deep, but actually might have gone a little bit too far. Two flashes going to cause this, and actually LeBlanc uh, going a little bit forward there, but it will work out with that Ignite coming out. Ari did not have the uh, mana and cooldowns to actually abuse LeBlanc going in solo there. And that will be a solo kill onto this LeBlanc to start things off in the middle lane. Which is exactly what this blue side wanted to see here. Uh, since this um, bottom lane is getting bullied pretty heavily overall. About 15 CS discrepancy in the bottom lane. And despite Maokai doing his best to shove in on this Swain. Uh, Swain is keeping up and farm pretty well, only 4 CS behind right now. Uh, and that Janna, with that shield, able to sustain through that harass and not really uh, think anything of it. Fortunately, Maokai uh, looking to uh, feign having a ward there, uh, going down to put it down, but he does not in fact have it. And, uh, J4 actually just gonna back back off there. He doesn't He's not 100% confident that that isn't warded after he was just there. And with Maokai playing it pretty safe right now, he's going to uh, assume that it is warded and back off. Give a little bit of time for it to expire, but really, uh, that might just give just barely enough time for Maokai to continue to farm up with those saplings and get his trinket back up to feel safer. Actually, J4 just going to opt to go back and uh, get his purchase there. Nari actually missing the charm there. It's so hard to land that charm. Uh, when you've got a LeBlanc who can just uh, s instantly decommit uh, from trying to get those chains on you uh, as soon as she sees the star charm start to come out. So definitely a tricky lane. And now that LeBlanc does have that first kill, 
Uh, it's gonna be even trickier. And actually, tanking it was uh, Nami there, tanking the ultimate from Caitlyn, so she's super low. Uh, gotta be very careful now that the ultimate is down. She can kind of hang around, maybe throw down uh, one last heal onto this Jinx before backing off, but a single Q uh, from this Jinx will be enough. And there's uh, Sejuani going in, not quite on the same page there, kind of solo, but that might be enough. No, with J4 coming in, that's gonna uh, make Sejuani think twice here. Gonna very closely maneuver between those Caitlyn traps and Good flash there to dodge out the last bit of damage, but here comes Ari who's going to come in and get the kill on Nami, who stayed way too long there. Uh, Maokai teleporting in, going to try and make something happen here, at least force them off the turret, who Ari is staying, hanging around trying to get this good uh, ultimate on the Jinx there, but unfortunately that will cost her her life, and Sejuani going to actually be uh, forcing a flash there, unfortunately didn't quite make it out. Uh, was hoping for that Maokai to twist it advance in to try and slow down the Caitlyn, uh, but unfortunately that flash was not foreseen, and LeBlanc, uh, distorting in there with the ultimate down as well. Gonna be caught out, though, by the Swain, who does throw that bird down on the original so they know which clone to go after, and that will be an extended fight that gives three kills, I believe, over to this red side, and with that, it looks like they're going to be able to start this dragon and get some good damage on it uh, before they can even get it spotted. Unfortunately, Nami not going to be able to be a hero with that bubble. Certainly going to try, actually going to throw down the ultimate there, realizing just how low they were getting. Not a bad play at all. Try and get some aggro onto their team, team up with the dragon, uh, prevent um, uh, the team from responding before the next auto cycle of the dragon. And with that, get some kill credit, but unfortunately she was not able to do so. Valiant attempt, though, by the Nami. Unfortunately, like I said, not going to be enough there. So that will be the first dragon of the game going over to this red side here to further that lead. Though, uh, all of their lanes, except for the bottom lane right now, is actually trailing in CS. Looks like... Uh, LeBlanc going to be giving over this blue buff here. As we see the same with Ari. LeBlanc going to finish that off. And Ari gets hers as well. Um, so we're going to see plenty of sustain sustained action in this middle lane though. Ari is going to be a bit ahead. Ari uh, opting to go uh, what looks like for the route of a... Um, excuse me, Abyssal Scepter to try and shred some of that MR that is inevitably going to be coming out uh, with the Swain who's going to be doing plenty of damage in his own right to this team once he gets that rod finished and starting to stack here. Um, he is currently a little bit ahead of this map guy since he does have uh, that scepter built. Um, so when we see these trades here in the top lane, unfortunately Swain not able to land that snare, but Swain can be trading very effectively with Maokai even when he does throw on his ultimate like that. Um, especially since Swain can just sustain on up with his ultimate as well. Oh, yeah, actually kind of painfully missing that charm there on that minion. Does not bode well. Perhaps a, uh, a future sign that there might be uh, chances for this blue team to come back off of uh, already missing some charms in the future. Actually, Maokai going to flash away there. Just very, uh, I mean, good play to respect the Swain damage, which can uh, surprise you if you're not careful, but um, I'm not sure that was necessarily the best play. He does have the boots already completed, uh, whereas Swain is going barefoot right now, so he should have been able to walk away from that all right. Um, actually, a lot of damage coming on to that Nami, who does uh, get some procs off of her Spell Thieves right here, her Frost Fang right now. Um, to get her gold in return, and she will be able to sustain right up through that. With that charm coming in, she's taking so much damage. Nami needs to be careful. If she keeps taking that much amount of damage, she's gonna uh, get um, herself in a situation where she can get zeroed out by that Ari, uh, especially if that Janna comes back and lands some CC again. A single Ari charm followed up by a tornado can spell doom for a support, uh, especially one as squishy as Nami, despite. 
Uh, her, su her sustain making her feel like a tank, she certainly is not when uh, dealing with those um, champions that do a lot of burst damage. And see Maokai getting a little bit aggressive here. Actually, Nami throwing down the ultimate, uh, perhaps looking for a uh, counter to an engagement they thought was coming, but actually turned out they were just going to back off. So that will be the Nami ultimate down. It is a pretty short cooldown on that, but should a team fight break out in this middle lane around this uh, turret, that's going to be a critical ultimate down. And Nami actually is caught out here in this middle lane. That will be the Cataclysm coming out as well. Going to force the flash on Sejuani. Is J4 actually going to land the charm? And that will be the kill uh, with the Kaelin ultimate finishing her off. Unfortunately, for the red side, there was a split push. The reason that was 3v3 was because there was a Jinx in the bottom lane, but uh, this clone LeBlanc gonna be able to get out. Actually gonna force a flash out of J4. Maybe that Jinx ultimate should be coming out to try and land on J4. Uh, she does have an idea of where she is. You see the pings coming out. Will it be the Jinx ultimate? We don't see it quite yet. And actually gonna opt not to try for it uh, and just back off after shoving those minions into the lane. Unfortunately for the blue side, a missed opportunity on that very weak J4 who did uh, manage to sustain back up a little bit after clearing that camp. But overall, uh, that will be um, some more kills going over to this red side. Uh, unfortunately for the blue side, very close but unanswered overall. Um, so that with the uh, turrets that were taking, that was two turrets falling in the middle lane for one turret in the bottom lane. Uh, certainly a very critical turret in that outer bottom turret for the red side to uh, start to ease up on that dragon control. And we see right now the blue side actually going around throwing down their wards trying to finish off that scuttle crab to get all the vision down for this dragon, which they do now have. But um, with those middle uh, lane uh, turrets down, this is going to be very risky play from now on. And we see Ari actually taking a lot of damage. LeBlanc going to Take the ride back out. Wasn't sure if that was just Janna or if there's anyone else coming up as well. And with that uh, enormous Janna shield, certainly doesn't want to risk uh, not being able to put any additional damage for taking any more CC in the face there. And we see Red Side trying to start to clean up some of this vision, get some vision of their own. Um, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to get too much down. Just uh, a couple wards here. So they will see the blue side coming in, but unfortunately uh, the blue side vision control right now is so strong they see absolutely everything that's going on, whereas for the red side it's largely a mystery. They know some of them are hanging around in this bush, but other than that they can't tell. And again, the blue side knows exactly where this red team is right now. Uh, and they're going to see that Caitlyn now in the bottom lane as well. And J4 flagging dragging over to this red side, uh, or excuse me, to that blue buff, uh, going to give them time ease up that pressure, create a little bit more pressure in the middle lane for themselves uh, and force a decision to either miss out on that CS in the blue middle lane or give up control positioning of this dragon pit right now. And it looks like they're going to opt for the latter of those two. But the blue side not really fully committing on it, keeping that Jinx in the middle lane to try and create one more wave of pressure. And after she does so, um, she will be going down to group here as we see people looking to try and catch some sort of engagement onto here as the vision wars do come out. They are able to clear out that ward right there. So they are, well, they are hatching this ward over here. Um, they are going to have a little bit of vision taken away. Um, but their vision is continuing to persist here. Uh, with that ward right on top of the dragon, they will know if anything starts. And both teams going to opt to just uh, hang out in this mid lane. Try and create pressure, see what they can do, uh, and see if they can force one another off. LeBlanc actually was roaming down to that bottom lane to try and alleviate the pressure there, but wasn't able to. Feels like this team fight's going to break out very soon. Uh, Maokai coming, coming here as well, uh, sacrificing that damage in the top lane so they can actually start off this turret. That will be the Swain Teleport coming out right after the start here. And Jinx throwing down the Chompers is going to actually land them. But here comes Ari landing a charm. And all of a sudden, all the AoE ultimates are coming out. And uh, that's going to be two kills going over to the red side. And three kills. Yes, this uh, heal from Janna will not be enough. And Jinx going to be outsmarting the cop. Going to be dodging the Janna. But she will go down to the end. 
to that Janna. And that will be Nami as well. Yes, going over to Kaylin for the ace. Overall, a four, or excuse me, a five for one. Going over in favor of this red side, and that will definitely be this inner turret going down as well. With them able to fall back to the dragon and pick up what will be the second dragon of the game for this red side. As we see Ari on ward duty right now. Going to clear out some of the visible pink wards in this area. Uh, very unfortunate fight there. And just went a little bit uh, uh, too poorly for this red or for this blue side with all those AOE ultimates coming out, landing on the targets they need to do to uh, knock people down. But here comes Maokai actually going to use the teleport right into the pit to try and force them off, and he successfully does. They're so low, they they might not even want to contest this here. Sejuani thinking about jumping over the wall every second here, but it's going to just focus on landing the smite right here. She will be uncontested, so she doesn't. LeBlanc coming in, going to be able to get them. Uh, knocked down, and there's the last distortion over the wall. LeBlanc with the triple kill. All of a sudden, this doesn't look like it's so bad for the blue side after all. They do lose that turret, uh, but that in that extended fight, because uh, the red side did not go back, got a little greedy trying to go for both the turret and the dragon with these low death timers this early in the game, actually going to work out to be a uh, 4 for 5 in favor of the red side but with one turret going over the red side and one dragon going over to the blue side uh, we now see Swain doing a split push thing in the top lane gonna get that turret uh, the outer turret for the top lane finished off uh, but it looks like they're gonna try to answer in kind here with Jinx the turret destroyer wailing away on this middle lane turret the Jan shields actually gonna be enough to disincentivize them from hanging around and that mid turret will survive but probably not for long as we see LeBlanc actually almost caught out here by the Swain showing the Birdman trying to catch people out um, but unfortunately uh, the Raven LeBlanc wise of those tricks gonna be able to get away they're just gonna hop away really quick and it looks like the bottom lane is pushing for this blue side so they're with their uh, turret already down in the middle lane. They're going to opt to send Nami back to uh, get some items purchased here at that break as Jinx will take this red buff here. And now LeBlanc with her blue buff as well. Uh, going to be all set for this team. And we see a lot of great wards coming out. From this blue side, setting up their defensive line of pink wards uh, with some forward wards here. They know that this game might start to slip away from them here, uh, given that it is 6 and 11 right now. Uh, they do have a lot of uh, opportunity to certainly come back, but they also have a lot of opportunity to let the spiral. And that's actually going to be the kill onto LeBlanc, who the clone, the clone spawn. Let's watch that one more time. Absolute great play there by LeBlanc. I can't tell. I couldn't tell if that clone was guided back in the last second, but this is a lot of damage. That true damage on the second shot with the turret was enough, and that clone spawned on just the right side to block it, to get LeBlanc out of their protector, and that will be a free kill in this middle lane uh, for this LeBlanc. And now that LeBlanc is a 5-2-1 LeBlanc with the item that's been deleted for good, certainly not as scary as it has been in previous times, but certainly nothing to mess with here. She's already got that Void Staff completed, got her uh, Magic Penetration Boots completed. So with just the AP from that Morella Namicon, uh, which is also going to be great on that Swain, as it will slow down the uh, Swain with those Grievous Wounds, he will not be able to sustain him. Uh, we might start to see an insane LeBlanc happen where she can 100-0 people. As we see, boom, right there without even landing the chains. Caitlyn already half her health gone from a single combo. Uh, not even full combo, two-thirds of a combo. LeBlanc definitely looking to become a nightmare LeBlanc. It looks like she's going to opt to try and go for that Zonia's next. Um, get a little bit of defensive power to protect herself as what's going to be the carry for this game. Um, rather than going straight for that death cap. So if she manages to get a couple of uh, kill streaks going on, she might 
actually just have to skip right on over to that death cap instead, but right now it does look like it will be going for that Zonia so she can get in, throw down a full combo worth of damage, even using her ultimate Zonia's, wait for some cooldowns to come off, uh, to come back up, excuse me, uh, and then be able to finish somebody off whoever's still hanging around. Here she is again in the top lane looking to make something happen here. She's hanging pretty far back. Maokai trying to bait this out but they do know that they're coming. They see the wards uh, the wards wisely placed down by this blue side. There was also a ward up here. They're going to be swept out now uh, but they do know where this red side is and they will now know that the scuttle crab is taken seeing that ghost effect on everybody. And Nami actually going to be able to defend this pink ward. Very good play by this blue team, setting up those wards in a defensive line of scrimmage around their pink wards so they can try and defend them. And they do force pretty heavy commitments from this red team just to clear out vision. And they're going to throw down a pink ward again and be able to reclaim that vision. Absolute judicious play from this blue side. Really good, uh, safe play, taking their time, defending what they need to defend, laying down the harass where they can. And LeBlanc actually almost killing that J4. This is what we're talking about, about dissuading this red side team from trying to do anything. If you can just give LeBlanc enough time, continue to control that vision as they're doing. Actually going to throw down the Nami ultimate, seeing if they can catch someone out. It looks like unfortunately they were not able to. They might have thought uh, they were going to be able to catch J4, but unfortunately he did flag and drag over the wall, so he's going to be able to get out all right. Uh, but now that Nami Ultimate is down, it looks like they're going to try and finish off this middle lane turret, which they should be able to do. Jinx going to be able to eat right through uh, that Janna shield. And with the wards coming down, it looks like they're going to be able to take this dragon here. No problem. Scuttle Crab going over to their side as well. And with the wards thrown down, the vision control established, uh, we might see another dragon going over to this blue side. Swain trying to do what he can uh, to create this split push pressure up in the top lane. And get as much damage onto that turret as possible. Clear out that minion wave. And now actually going to immediately teleport down here. Teleport to the flag actually. Very good use since you don't have the vision control. Uh, just throw down the flag wherever you want him. Watch him come to you. I love that use of the flag. Um, and it looks like they are going to be all in position here. That is the teleport down on Swain. And that is a full teleport timer, given that he did teleport uh, not to a uh, turret, but to an item on the uh, ground there, the J4 flag. But with the vision control blue side does have, they're going to be able uh, to continue to scout with those Maokai saplings. And LeBlanc... Going to be able to actually force a flash out of that Swain, who is now way out of position for the fight. Jinx able to just wail away. Great ultimate from Jinx, knowing she was wailing away. Going to get flagged and dragged away from just threw it in that general direction. She will get excited off the Janna. She will get excited off of the Ari, but she will get snared by the Swain. So there will not be any more kills coming up for this Jinx, but a triple kill is definitely something they will take on this blue side without question. And that will also be their second dragon of the game. Very good play from this Jinx. Definitely skirting around the outset of that fight. Uh, getting exactly what she needed to get done. Uh, and able to bring the damage, get those kills, and get a lovely triple to her name. So now she will have plenty of gold to cash in on when she goes back uh, to complete um, those boots. Get another item uh, most of the way completed even as well. It looks like she will be opting to go pick up that red buff before she does so. But fantastic play. And again, we have to give huge credit to that LeBlanc as well. Using that damage she had the exact way she needs to in that fight by going up... Uh, throwing down a whole bunch of damage on that Swain, who is a very critical part of the meat for this red side team. Um, he's going to need to be able to be there uh, to prevent, as we see this blue buff going over to LeBlanc here, uh, he's going to need to be in the middle of those fights, not just to bring his own damage from his ultimate, uh, which with that zone is completed, with that rod uh, stacking right now, I believe, not full stacks quite yet. No, it actually is at full stacks right now. With that full sta fully stacked rod, with that completed Zonius, he'll be able 
uh, to go burn man in the middle of a team Zonius to prevent it draining his mana and get quite a bit of damage on the team and heal himself up for quite a bit as well and with all of that he's definitely a force to be reckoned with but LeBlanc in the last fight was able to get so much damage of him or out on him right at the start that she basically took uh, Swain out of the fight he had to turn on his ultimate flash away even not just walk away but flash away so he couldn't flash back into the fight once it erupted um, and then he was on the outskirts of a fight not really ready to go in afraid that he might get 100 zeroed if he did uh, because he wasn't at 100 because uh, he needed time to try and sustain back up time which he did not have and then the team fight broke out and Jinx of course was able to put on those excited pants <laughs> and uh, go crazy on this team here. Now this is uh, all the ultimates back up for every side now. So this next team fight should be uh, quite an action-packed one. The gold lead technically still is in favor of this red side because of that an intensive turret advantage they have. Nami actually gonna come in and eat a charm right to the face but just does not care. Uh, gonna sustain up, gonna actually cost her her ultimate for doing so. But it looks like she's gonna be alright with that and just gonna sustain up back on out and it looks like this blue side will play a little bit more judiciously now uh, that that Nami ultimate is down. Well, Nami getting very aggressive throwing herself into the front line again and again. I'm willing to try and say, hey, you know, I've built some uh, resistances. I've got my sustain. I'm going to be okay here if I go in. And J4 really wants to clear that ward, but very respectful of that LeBlanc damage that she can bring. So has to wait for his team there, and they will sweep it out, so they'll still get in the end, but that will cost them a sweeper as well uh, on the cooldown. Unfortunately, double wards being thrown onto the Gromp there. Gromp actually helping out the Swain since he turned on his ultimate. Uh, he will not go down to the Jinx ultimate. Quite a bit of damage there. Probably should turn on his ultimate just so he can try and sustain when LeBlanc inevitably comes in out of nowhere to finish him off. And that will be another kill onto this now. 6-3-1 and one LeBlanc. And that's exactly what you want to see. If you, don't, if you don't have a Nami ultimate, that's okay. Just kill him. That's what LeBlanc's for. <laughs> uh, as we see Jinx peeling through these turrets in the top lane, trying to even up that turret score as much as possible. Uh, and with that completed static shift, she's going to be tearing through those minion lines as well. Already taking a little bit of harassment there, uh, but needs to respond to this. Going to have to leave that pink board there in the meantime to try and get this team off of that inner turret. Prevent that from going down as well. It looks like they're going to be hunting for Deathwish here. Going to kind of telegraph it though, so the red side is going to play a little bit far back. Actually, J4 opted to face check it. If they had hung out in that bush, they might have been able to catch someone out, but not fully confident uh, by themselves right now. Going to just back away, not give up uh, the position they're in, uh, not let themselves get a little bit too far ahead of themselves, uh, and throw what could be this comeback. Uh, right down the drain. Now, a good time uh, to look at this vision control again. Absolute fantastic vision control from the blue side. Very line of scrimmage, very uh, defensive around. We did see the red team right around here, so these were very defensive wards around their pink wards, uh, whereas the red side uh, actually doesn't have a single pink ward on the map right now. Uh, the blue side's been very good at clearing them out uh, and replacing them with their own blue wards, or excuse me, green wards blue side green wards that is um and unfortunately for that the red side vision has been almost totally denied right now and uh, after seeing that sweep we're gonna throw down uh a ward right outside of its range to force the second sweeper out for a single ward uh unfortunate play there uh for the red side but excuse me pardon me this, is, this game isn't action packed enough for me <laughs> And Caitlyn actually going to be securing the Skull Crab just barely with that auto. Uh, so that will be the speed trying given over to this red side here. 
but little do they know they are doing it on top of a ward. Uh, so there will be full vision. There comes the Nami ultimate. Actually, does land on two people. But Swain doing his job this time. Actually zoning out without being uh, taken taken down too low at the start by LeBlanc. Swain showing why he's picked up. He's so effective uh, at that zoning potential. But unfortunately, LeBlanc, since she wasn't in that team fight, she was certainly doing work elsewhere. And where was that elsewhere? It was in that middle lane, creating that damage. I. Uh, on to those minions, clearing out that wave, able to make it so they can just go right in uh, and get that middle lane turret finished off. And it actually looks like they're going to tank it up onto this Maokai for Jinx, who will be able to peel right through um, despite that Janus shield. Not going to be enough. Jinx going to get excited, going to run away, going to be fine. Uh, with LeBlanc now clear, having cleared out that wave, looming around, this red side's got to not get a little overconfident in this chase here. Uh, looks like they will send Swain ahead uh, to try and scout it out for him. Never too cocky uh, when there's a LeBlanc in the game. And unfortunately, that will be another Skull Crab uh, going over to this red side, so they will have uh, good vision coming out. And a little bit of extra mobility. Trying to soften up this blue buff to make sure LeBlanc can get out. Unfortunately, it actually goes over to Jinx with that last auto. But here's a team fight, so it might not matter. Uh, Rooted is J4, who's taking shot after shot from Jinx with the Q toggled on, and then the ultimate does finish him off. Great Zonius from Swain. No CC laid down to catch him as soon as he comes out of it. The Chompers, uh, the LeBlanc chain, unfortunately none of that was able to be thrown out. But they will not be punished for it. Uh, aside from potentially missing a follow-up kill there, Ari with the Spirit Rush in would have contested that very heavy, heavily. Excuse me. So, definitely <laughs> style play Golden Girls uh, LeBlanc going uh, gold for us here. Going to clean up that wave and probably go B. Unfortunately, again though, that does mean this blue buff is still on to Jinx. So she's going to have to uh, really make some... Uh, strong plays here with that Q burning through that because LeBlanc's damage is now going to be severely taken down especially in comparison to Ari who does get her blue buff but again looking at the vision control J4 opting to smite the wolves there just for a little extra vision control and I think that's the right choice because blue side hasn't gone too deep uh, there are some deep wards, of course, but there's not too much total control of that uh, vision area. But the key thing is there's a lot of defensive wards coming out from this red side. A lot of their green wards are being thrown down uh, just in the name of defense here. And unfortunately, just barely that ward was in, in the line of sight of the pink ward. So going to be swept out there as well. And Nami actually going pretty far forward. Throwing down a ward right in the face of Ari. Uh, very lucky she didn't get charmed to death there. It looks like right now uh, the item breaks uh, are pretty good um, for this blue side here. Unfortunately, that frozen heart not totally completed onto this Maokai. Uh, so they are looking for a little bit more time to farm up to get in a smooth item break onto LeBlanc as well, who's trying to split push as much as possible, which is why we're seeing this team start shuffling around. She's trying to get a last little chunk of money so she can actually uh, get this up into a death cap. But here comes the uh, uh, coin act of being popped, and that will be going in on the Jinx, who's going to throw down her ultimate, but she's still in the Cataclysm. Actually just going to focus on the back line with that Q toggled on, and she will get a Janna before she goes down, but unfortunately, Janna is not the one you're worried about, and it looks like that definitely will be the Spirit Rush coming out to finish off that Sejuani, and that will be Maokai going down as well. So a triple kill onto this uh, Caitlyn, and a very good play there. To actually you know to use that coin uh, thrown out there, get that free silver ultimate, get your team in position to where even though they were able to throw out the flash, throw out the heal to try and get away, J4 could flag and drag close enough to get the cataclysm landed and uh, get what he needed to done so he can actually get those kills. And what do they get for it? Not just the kills, not just a 4 for 1, but a Baron buff. 
very critically timed Baron buff for them. And that's definitely uh, going to be a critical factor here going into the rest of the game. The dragon will be spawning here uh, in the next 50 seconds. So they're going to have those waves able to push. They're going to have anybody able to go split push uh, and be able to rejoin them. Unfortunately that Swain uh, teleport is down and will be down for a little bit longer as well. Um, so they will be able to send Maokai, who does have his teleport up, uh, to a lane to try and answer any split push to try and hold off those minions as long as possible. And then we'll be able to teleport right back into the fight as soon as it starts. We're seeing uh, the vision start to shift over to this uh, dragon pit area. There is, uh, luckily for blue side, already some good vision laid down. Uh, and the red side doesn't have too much offensive vision, but it's going to be enough for them to try and rush it down. It looks like they will be able to uncontested. Blue side not willing to mess around with that Baron buff up, uh, respecting uh, the uh, gold lead they have now uh, with that that is Locket being accidentally popped, I believe, on that J4. Um, hopefully no one on the blue side saw it, though, so we'll still give respect to that Locket active. Um, but, uh, yes, with that gold lead on the red side, uh, uh, as well as the uh, minion pushing, uh, they're not going to opt to do anything too crazy. But J4 actually going to Cataclysm a Zonia's LeBlanc. We'll be able to flash out and walk right back on out. And that will be Swain not going down, actually. That will be the turret not able to finish him off and Ari able to pick up her kill. And that will be the Jinx ultimate able to finish off J4. And unfortunately, uh, Swain able to take out LeBlanc. I'm not sure exactly what that was. Might have been uh, so some, some sustained damage here. Because uh, I did see one more bird coming in. No, maybe it was an Ignite. Or no, actually, it looked like it was some minions. That Q from Caitlyn was not, uh, unfortunately, did not connect. But I think the minion aggro onto LeBlanc was actually enough to finish her off. An unfortunate turn of events there, so that will be a, a two for one. Well, it could have been a one for one, but LeBlanc, trying to hang in it, uh, knows she's a lot of the damage for this team. Uh, but actually, Ari getting very aggressive and ends up being caught out herself. Caitlyn eating through those minions. Nami not able to shield her, and that will be an ace, unfortunately, for this red side. Um, unfortunately for the blue side, the ace for the red side. And just a single shot from Caitlyn now, able to finish off that turret, take this inhibitor, but Sejuani is up, so this probably will not be a chance for them to end the game here. Looks like they are just going to rotate up to join with Swain. And try and get uh, that inner turret cleaned up as well. Caitlyn actually just going to tank up the turret shots. Use that attack speed to just go through it. Knows that Jan is there for backup. Swain's there for backup. And she'll be alright. With that blood there so she'll be able to heal back up. And we got to understand why this is happening. Um, because, you know, we were focusing so heavily on the Jinx. Who was very far ahead. The LeBlanc who was very far ahead. And they were doing a lot of damage. But they were not, in the last couple fights, able to get to Caitlyn. They were only uh, getting those fights, chunking out the more tankier people like Swain, which earlier in the game was very viable. But now that Swain has uh, his Abyssal Scepter completed, has the Zonias uh, and the Frozen Heart completed, has the Rod fully stacked, uh, J4 has his defensive items built as well, the Thormail, the Locket, the Randuins. They need to start getting that initial poke harass to start off the engagement, on to the squishies, on to uh, preferably not Janna, who they were able to get it on last time, but is definitely not the target you want. Uh, if you do get her at the start of the fight, just like last time at the Baron Pit, uh, she will go down, and then you will still lose the fight two for one, because she is not the critical person, especially when you have a Caitlyn who has gone this insane. 14, 1, and 3. Already almost full build. Just a little bit um, of gold away 
from finishing off that mercurial and getting her full build completed here. That is a Caitlyn I certainly do not want to challenge. <laughs> so what the blue side needs to do is recognize that and prepare for Caitlyn to be the nightmare she is. Wait. Set up your wards. They've had very strong vision control, very judicious vision control thus far. Continue that as they're doing, as we see them throwing down wards right now, not face checking into the jungle, throwing down defensive lines of wards, waiting it out. Maybe extend them further later. But just hang out, try and stop the minion waves. Actually, let your bot lane minions be hero minions and ta take out an entire turret for you and keep pushing. Uh, and try and hope you can hold off these uh, waves as long as possible until you can land some key harass onto that Kaelin. Land a pick onto that Kaelin. That actually is a fantastic Sejuani ultimate followed by a Jinx zap onto Kaelin, but then that's not going to be what they needed, and that will not be anyone going down. Kaelin now able to backline, and actually Ari with a lot of AoE damage coming into this, getting two kills for free here. And again, what happened was they went in, uh, they did not fully commit because that Caitlyn was such a nightmare. But that was the perfect engagement they needed, they just did not follow up on it. And by the time they did, it was simply too late. And then they had to, again, turn their focus on to who? Janna, J4, the people you don't want your damage on. And this time they actually didn't finish off the kill on either of them, unfortunately. So that will be uh, an unanswered two for nothing as well as a top lane inhibitor and with two inhibitors down you start to reach a game state where it's terrifying when you've got a nightmare Caitlyn on the red side when you've got two inhibitors down you you gotta start to be afraid of what you can possibly do here we do see excuse me the games are just so on action packed I don't know why I'm yawning today they're, they're actually quite exciting um, well, we do see uh, LeBlanc actually opting to go for the uh, upgrade on the warding trinket to try and make sure this is obviously going to be an uncontestable dragon here, or Baron. They're going to just try and trade dragon for it, uh, which it looks like they will be able to do because Swain is uh, going to just be pushing uh, that wave in and going to check a little bit too late. They will spot it out here, um, but it will probably be too late with that smite. It looks like Swain might be able to bait him away by his team enough time, and it looks like no, they're not going to be able to. But the team fight might break out after. They have to throw down the so or the Nami ultimate, to try and get away here, and great CC actually follow up. But unfortunately, Caitlyn was able to get him uh, that ultimate locked onto LeBlanc, and let's look back and see why it was not able to be blocked here. Obviously, LeBlanc taken so low by that focus on that, and. Just was not correct use of her clone there. Did not throw Jinx in the way. Did not put her clone in the way. Unfortunately, uh, LeBlanc gonna go down for free to that uh, Caitlyn ultimate. And Jinx actually good sidestep on that J4 ultimate. But unfortunately, that will be a Jinx who's out alone and bare. And there's nothing you can do about that. And that's another triple kill onto an 18, 1, and 5 Caitlyn. And this is... Well, certainly gotta be the end. Super minion streaming into the base from the top side. A bear inhibitor in the middle lane, and that's the Nexus Turks going down. Poor Maokai gonna try his best of valiant effort, but he's gonna give up his life as well. And that will be the game going over to this red team. But a valiant effort, a very strong comeback, I would say. Though technically they never really lost the lead in gold. It certainly felt like the momentum had solidly swung back to this blue side. But unfortunately, uh, that was not enough because Caitlyn, again, clearly the story of the game here. 18, 1, and 6. Uh, full build so early in the game uh, compared to the rest of these people who, um, though certainly not too far behind. I mean, we look at uh, Maokai, two items off of a full build. Um, on the opposing team, and he's the tank who's going to be dealing with Caitlyn all the time. Certainly was not able to do so. As we check this damage grid here, just to see what it's like. Jinx obviously doing great job with that kiting in those team fights. Almost always able to get off her ultimates when she needed to. 
and actually, Caitlin, I uh, goodness, I I can't believe I'm saying this, but Caitlin, <laughs> more than uh, and almost more than any two members of the blue side combined here, uh, with that insane score, breaking a, a 10k lead over Jinx for the most damage on the blue on their respective teams. Uh, just insane. I mean, we can't we can't neglect that Ari as well, who put out tons of damage. There were tons of team fights we saw, though Ari herself uh, only ended up with uh, seven and five. That kill participation was very high, and in those fights, she was using uh, those orbs to get a lot of AOE damage. She landed very critical charms uh, that allowed Swain to get a, a lot more damage as well, uh, because they were actually stuck in the Swain AOE. So definitely good play from this red side overall. They got the team fights they needed as the uh, mid to late or uh, late early to mid game came in. They started to lose. Started to lose control of the game, not lose, but lose control of the game, have that start to slip away. But they know what they needed to do. They placed down as much vision as they could. They kept hitting their item breaks. They kept positioning better to keep Caitlyn in the back line. Always make it an impossible predicament to try and get to Caitlyn. Save your Jarvan uh, engagement, not for engagement, but for zoning away from Caitlyn. Save the swing to peel off of Caitlyn. And as soon as they started doing that, we saw what happened in this game. Caitlyn went absolutely nightmare Caitlyn shadow form. <laughs> and just tore through this team. So that will be the game. Uh, going over to Facebook, a feed story uh, over Intel. And it certainly was living up to their name where uh, the story of the game was Caitlyn getting fed. Uh, and just nothing to be done about it. So... Very good play by this red side, capitalizing off of the uh, uh, chances they were given. And that will be the match for uh, this uh, team today. We do have one more game to cast live here uh, before the end of the day. So definitely stay tuned to the stream if you're interested in watching that. That will be between uh, Planter Technologies Prime and Cerner 1, another Viomal uh, division game. Uh, and uh, if you like this game, if you want to stay tuned to this channel, all these videos will be uploaded uh, later today. Uh, and every Sunday I will be casting, streaming live. Uh, and all the games also will be uploaded from all the casters to this beautiful website you see on your stream right now. The After Hours Gaming League website. Uh, all the schedules will be posted there as well. So if you want to, now that we are in Divisions, find a favorite team to root for, follow, see how they do in the standings. This is the place to go to get your information. And thank you for tuning in. I will see you guys next time.